Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you are new to this channel, you are specially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. So transport across cell membranes. You know, we started by saying you have two major types of transport, the passive and the active forms of transport. So the passive one, we said that Passive doesn't mean that it doesn't use energy, okay? But it simply means that the source of energy is not ATP. That is just the difference. That's the difference. It uses the natural, in quotes, natural energy that every particle, every chemical particle has. Even sand like this, they have energy, okay? That's what makes, they are always in motion, brown in motion and all of that. So when they are in solution and the aqueous form, they keep moving. So let's, we dealt with all of that at the part one of it. Now we're dealing with active transport that uses ATP, which is the energy currency. So it's just like up here, you're moving in your car, very slopey here, downward. You don't need to apply the throttle or the accelerator for the car to move force of gravity natural energy is moving it but when you are climbing down the hill you must if you remove your hand from your your leg from the accelerator you might start going back but to go against it you need the energy and the strength of the engine using the fuel as energy source to power it so that's just an analogy for you to understand the difference. Now, ATP is the energy currency of the cell. What exactly is energy? Because sometimes you can get so philosophical and abstract about this energy of a thing. In the real sense of the word, energy, energy has to do with attraction. Everything about energy is attraction, force of attraction in the breaking of chemical bonds and the formation of chemical bonds because everything all physiological processes chemical reactions are the basis of them and chemical reaction simply means breakage and say it's something a chemical reaction it's just breakage and formation of chemical bonds Okay, covalent bond, ionic bond. You learned all of that in chemistry. And the breakage and when you talk about bonds has to do with binding, attraction, like a magnetic force. So that is those energy is all about attraction. Okay, so this ATP adenosine, adenosine triphosphate. The bond, the phosphate bond is a high energy bond. That means it is strong. Okay? So when it is broken, it releases that force of attraction to power different chemical reactions that lead to physiological processes. That's just understand it. Hope it's clear. So now, active transport. We have two types of active transport. One of them is the primary active transport and the secondary active transport what's the difference is that the primary active transport uses ATP directly and it is breaking down this phosphate bone and powering the transport across the cell membrane very directly but this one uses ATP indirectly we will explain all of it let's start with the primary active transport now one of the best studied examples of primary active transport is what is known this sodium potassium ATPase 
activity we are going to use it to understand what primary active transport really is okay so this carrier is a carrier protein all active transport they use a carrier protein remember facilitated diffusion okay uses carrier protein the same thing active transport both the primary and the second they use a carrier protein so this particular carrier protein actually it's an enzyme when you see ace it's talking about an enzyme atp is that means it breaks down atp the carrier protein itself so this carrier protein carries sodium and it carries potassium okay so what happens it is present in all cells what happens is that you see this is the cell sodium it always takes sodium out of the cell it takes three molecules of sodium out of the cell sodium and takes two molecules of potassium in into the cell this particular carrier protein and it is active transport it needs ATP because they are going against concentration gradient up here that means sodium is already plenty outside normally in diffusion it will go from where it is higher concentration to lower but sodium is higher outside and naturally it should diffuse inside but this particular ATP carrier protein by breaking that ATP powers the movement of sodium outside from where it is lower inside the cell and pushing it further outside against concentration that's why it needs that in that so much energy from ATP and then it takes in potassium potassium also is already much inside but and lesser outside but it still takes it now what is the mechanism this is what happens carrier protein proteins one of the ways they function is that you must always remember they have shape they can change shape call it conformational change so what happens is that now this let me draw a bigger something like a bigger cell so you see it very well now this is the carrier protein okay this is transmembrane it has some parts outside extra cell some part inside so what does it do it wants to take sodium outside so three molecules of sodium like this bind to the intracellular part of the carrier protein and two molecules of potassium bind to the outside potassium needs to go inside so what happens is that the binding of sodium to this carrier protein at those binding sites activates the enzymatic activity of this carrier protein the ATP remember it's an enzyme the carrier protein itself is an enzyme so it activates the enzymatic activity and it cleaves ATP ATP is already attached to it so it breaks down ATP and releases the energy the attractive force so by breaking down ATP it now forceful relates itself ATP and then we try phosphate so it now takes that one phosphate that it has broken down and adds it to itself phosphorylation phosphorylation okay so that phosphorylation has changed the chemical nature of the carrier protein itself so it's a conformational change happens that conformational change does what it twists this carrier protein like this that this sodium part now goes out why this one so just imagine it it's turning it a change of shape and this one comes in that's how it brings takes sodium out brings potassium in okay so that is what happens 
primary active transport. There are several other, but this is the common that I present in all cells. You have calcium ATPase, hydrogen ATPase, and so on. Many other kinds of primary. So directly cleaves ATP. That's why it's called primary active transport. Hope you understand it now. So we're going to be looking at what exactly is secondary active transport when we say it's indirect use of ATP. We're going to be looking at that after this break. Right, welcome back. So now we're going to be dealing with secondary active transport. Listen very carefully. Secondary active transport depends on primary active transport. The energy that primary active transport has created is what drives the transport of secondary active transport. Okay, now let me explain. They are usually coupled, they depend on the movement of sodium. Now, this ATPase, this primary active transport enzyme, has now taken sodium outside the cell. A lot of sodium is now concentrated outside the cell. Remember that apart from this, sodium has other channels. You know, remember we talked about channels, sodium channel, potassium channel. This they have their normal channel where diffusion, simple diffusion occurs. Okay, so it has taken a lot of sodium outside. So it now creates a very wide concentration gradient that will now drive sodium. Sodium will now start using its normal sodium ion channels to go back inside. So sodium is going back inside. That this one it's pushing it outside the primary distance. All right, okay? So now the energy we are talking about is the concentration gradient, the difference that this one has created. So now as it's dry as sodium is entering inside because of that wide concentration gradient some other molecules that need to be transported into the cell they join and attach themselves to sodium sometimes they can also be going and depending on the kind of carrier protein both of them use carrier proteins okay so when only one substance is being transported usually we call the carrier protein a unipot unipot pump okay when it is two it can be either sync pot or anti pot in the sense that it is taking one inside taking another one outside like this one now it's an antipot transporter, antipotter. Okay, antipot is also known as counter transporter. Why this one is known as co transporter? It's moving two substances or molecules in the same direction. Why this one is moving open? That's just by the way. So what happens is that a good example is glucose. In some parts of the body, some cells, especially the cells in the intestine and the ones in the kidneys. The transportation of glucose, when you eat food, it breaks it down to glucose. To transport it, that process of absorption enters the blood. It's a process of transport. Those two places, glucose is very high, usually high inside those cells. Okay? But yet, glucose still needs to enter from the extracellular fluid into the cell that it's already high. Do you understand? So that's why it is called secondary active transport because glucose that has been transported, for example, is going against its concentration gradient. But it is doing that, it's able to do that because the carrier protein is transporting sodium the energy of sodium 
into the cell and then using that same energy that is taking in sodium glucose attaches and follows sodium but glucose in itself is going against its concentration gradient let me use this for example you see a rubber band like this okay just look at this focus on this rubber band if you can see it clearly now primary active transport does like this it stretches against its concentration gradient okay against its normal position this is normal position it goes against it stretches it at this point energy has been stored that if i remove my hand this thing will go back immediately so what is happening is that primary active transport does this takes sodium out then as sodium because of this stored energy which is the concentration gradient it wants to force itself back in as it's going back in it attaches glucose attaches to it that carrier protein it's a carrier protein so as it's going back glucose attaches to it and that this energy that it uses to go back carries glucose that glucose is now going in against its concentration gradient higher inside yet it is still going inside that's why it's called secondary and that energy is gotten from the energy created from primary active transport. that's secondary active transport hope you get it there are many other transport of amino acids too they use secondary active transport very easy to understand easy stuff all right so this is active transport for you Right, so the next video we're going to be dealing with special types of active transport. See you in the next video.